You're listening to Release Your Resistance with Bex Beltran, episode 35. Welcome to Release Your Resistance. This is Bex. The only reason why any of us don't have what we want in life is because of our own resistance. Right now, I'm learning how to recognize and release my resistance, and this podcast tells you how you can release your resistance so that you can live the exact life that you want. Let's get started. I have a question for you. Do you love your life? Do you love most of your life, some of your life, none of your life, all of your life? I have to tell you, I love my life. And when I thought about it, I was like, hmm, what makes me love my life? And what if I didn't love my life? What would I do? Today's episode is all about what you should do if you are not completely in love with your life. I have four suggestions for you to think about. So this can be about your entire life, like every single aspect of your life, these four suggestions might work for you. Or if there's just one area of your life that you're not super crazy about, one of these suggestions might be exactly what you need. The suggestions that I'm going to give you in today's episode are all about how you can love your life. The four things that I want to share with you are first for you to consider why. Why don't you currently love your life? Also, ways to explore your options. Then I want to tell you some possible changes that you can make to the actual living situation that you're in. And finally, possible changes that you can make to your thoughts. You probably knew that one was coming, right? Let's explore why don't you love your life right now, assuming that there might be a part of your life that you don't love. One reason that I could imagine that someone might not love their life, maybe you, maybe someone you know, is because maybe things aren't the way that they were before. Hi, 2020, right? I mean, All of us are probably in a situation right now in some area of our life or in some facet of our life where things are not the way they were before. And maybe that's causing us not to love our life as much. Another reason why someone might not love their life, maybe you, maybe someone you know, maybe things currently aren't the way you thought they would be. Either of these examples, either maybe things aren't the way they were before, or maybe things aren't the way you thought they would be, this can be about any topic. It could be about your job. It could be about your home, your home life, your household, your finances, your relationships, or relationship, or lack of relationship. It can be about your weight, your body, your health, your progress on a goal that you are trying to make. It could be about a business that you're trying to start or have already started. It could be about anything. Maybe things aren't the way they were before, or maybe things aren't the way you thought they would be. So this is an area for you to explore, for you to really look at and figure out, why don't I love my life right now? Is it because of one of those reasons? And once you know why you don't love your life right now, you know the specific area of your life and you know the specific reason, which could be one of those that I gave or could be something completely different, you have awareness and now you can explore what you could change. So there are a few suggestions of things that you could change. You could change the situation. So you could actually change your job your home, where you live. You could change the amount of money that you have or the amount of money that you make. You could change your relationship or you could change your relationship status. You could change the number on the scale, how much you weigh. You could change your habits. You could change your results. You could actually change any of those things. And notice, by the way, all of those things that I just mentioned, all of those are completely neutral your job, your home, where you live, your relationship status, the number on a scale, all of those are just situations. 
Some people will have really positive thoughts about those things, and then they probably love those areas of their lives. Some people might not have such positive thoughts about those things. And so those are the people who might want to learn how to love their life in that area. Explore what could change. First of all, you could change the situation. Secondly, and this is my work, this is the work that I'm promoting on this podcast and in my coaching practice, you can also change your thoughts about the situation. So you don't have to change your job. You could change your thoughts about your job and love it. You don't have to change your relationship status. You could change your thoughts about your relationship status and love it. This is how you can love your life. But I am not saying that the only thing to do is to change your thoughts. Remember, we started out with you could actually change the situation. And so I'm also suggesting you could change both. You can change your situation and you can change your thoughts either at the same time or choose one to change first and then choose the second one to change after or a combination thereof. And this is so exciting because it puts you in complete control. It means that you are not the victim of a circumstance. It means that you are not powerless about how your life goes and how you feel about your life. So let's start with the example of if you would like to change a situation. The first piece of advice that I have for you once you've noticed the situation that you want to change is to make a plan about what you will change. What specifically do you want to change? And I do think you should get specific. And you know I'm a fan of writing things down. I think you should write it all out so that you can see it in front of you in black and white. And then once you see what you want to change and you've gotten specific and you have a plan, a loosely maybe spelled out plan or a rough estimate of what you would like to do or change or achieve, then notice what would stand in the way of those changes. Now, this might seem a little counterproductive to think of what your obstacles are, but actually it's very proactive. If you can think of what your obstacles are, then you can also think of what resources you would need. So if you are trying to make a change in your job, for example, and one of the obstacles is you don't know where you would like to work, that's an obstacle. The resource is your research. You could ask friends and family. You could get on websites and research what people say about different employers and different industries. You could find out what qualifications are required to work in different jobs. You could find rough estimates of how much those jobs pay or what the working environment is like. So for the obstacle of feeling, I don't know where I would want to work or what I would want to do, the strategy or the resource is your own research to answer those questions. And then you get started on your plan. And this is the best part. This is the way that you will start to love your life. Because once you start working towards your plan, you are giving yourself so much. You're giving yourself information and learning. And your brain, I promise you, will love to learn, will love to get additional information and understand additional experience about whatever part of your life you're working towards loving. The other thing that you will get by getting started on your plan is leverage. You will be able to notice your own progress, your own momentum, and use that progress and momentum as evidence that you're changing your life and therefore you can start loving that area of your life. Because again, you've put yourself in control. You're not a victim to the circumstance, you are making changes and taking actions to get what you want, what you could love more. What about the second option? What about if you want to change your thoughts? You know this is my favorite. The first piece of advice I always give when people are thinking about their thoughts is to get awareness around what you're thinking. Again, I recommend writing down your thoughts. You can do this in journaling. You know I love journaling. You can just do a thought download where you just get out a blank sheet of paper and just write everything down, good or bad, making sense or not making sense, random sentences or well thought out examples. Just get awareness around what you're thinking by getting it all out in front of you. And then when you see all those thoughts, all those sentences, all those phrases, all those words, when you see them all in front of you, then 
you are able to separate what is a fact and what is an optional thought. And this is very surprising sometimes because you might be in the habit of thinking a specific thought so frequently that it's actually a belief, like a strongly held belief, and you might not even realize that it's optional. You might not even realize that this thought that you're thinking and believing and repeating and finding evidence for isn't necessary. Like you could think something else if you wanted to. So that's the benefit of seeing all your thoughts in front of you, noticing what is a thought and what is actually a fact, and then you're able to question everything. So when you see all those beliefs and thoughts and ideas that you find evidence for, when you see them, question them, check in and see, is that true? Is that helpful? Is that helping me love my life or is that causing me to hate my life? And once you've recognized, once you can see the difference, you can decide what you would rather think instead. There are a couple of different ways that you can decide what you would rather think instead. One strategy that I talked about in a previous episode, I think it was in the transformation episode or maybe in the resistance episode, you'll have to go back and listen to both and see where it was, is talking about a belief scale. If you know that you would rather think a different thought than what you're thinking about right now, you can do a daily exercise called a belief scale where you notice what you're believing right now and then you notice what you could believe instead. Isn't that interesting? Because all of those thoughts are still coming from your brain. And then when you see those next to each other, you can notice, huh, I can either keep on believing what I'm currently believing or I can believe this other new thought instead. Another technique that I love to do because I'm crazy about imagination is I love imagining either a fictional character who already has what I have or who already does what I want to do or already thinks what I want to think. So I'll either imagine this fictional character like in a movie or a show or a book or I'll just imagine my future self, who's not so much of a fictional character, although I guess you could make the argument that because she's in the future, she is still fictional. Either way, I think about this person who already has the life that I would love, and I think about what would she think? What would she be thinking right now? This character in a movie or this future self who already is living and loving the life that I want, what would she be thinking about this? And I notice what my imagination comes up with. And then I try that on for myself. What would she think? She would think this. Hmm, can I think this? Oh, she would think that. Ooh, can I think that? Maybe you can. All right. Once you've done one of those exercises or any other exercise, there are so many you can choose from, then you practice intentionally thinking your new thoughts. Just because you decide one morning, these are my new thoughts, I'm going to think them forever from now on. I mean, maybe you will. That'll be great. But maybe not, right? Because maybe you are in the habit of thinking the old thoughts, which is totally normal and totally fine. And again, remember, our brains don't want us to change anything because change represents effort. Just notice if you have any resistance to thinking the new thoughts or if you notice yourself slipping into old thinking habits, that's fine. That's normal. That means you're human. Good job. And just keep on practicing intentionally thinking those new thoughts that you've chosen to think instead. And the third option that I want to offer you about how to love your life is to do both at the same time. You could both change your situation, get the new job, change your relationship status, make more money, way less, whatever you want. You could change that situation at the same time as you're changing your thoughts. And those can both help each other. Those can both create evidence for each other. And basically you're approaching it from all angles. So you can make a plan to change your current situation while you are also thinking those intentional thoughts on purpose. Now that I've explained how this all works, I wanted to give you a few real life examples. Of course, I am not going to mention any names or divulge any secrets or break anyone's confidentiality, but I just want to share some real life examples of how this might work so that you can try it on for yourself. So I want you to think about someone who was so unhappy 
in her relationship. I have a client who came to me because of her unhappiness in her relationship. She felt like she was only ever trying to please her partner and it wasn't making her feel good. It made her feel powerless and it wasn't working, by the way, too. It didn't make the relationship any better while she was trying to please and basically affect and control the emotions of her partner. So what we decided to do in our coaching, we decided she wasn't going to change her relationship. She didn't want to leave the relationship or have a relationship with someone else or not be in a relationship. She didn't want to change the situation. She instead decided that she would change her thoughts. What we worked on was noticing why she was thinking that she needed to please her partner, why she was thinking that she was in charge of her partner's emotions and feelings. We worked on her noticing what was creating that for her and what she was creating by believing that, and we practiced other thoughts. We tried on other ideas. We looked for evidence from other areas of her life where she didn't feel like she needed to control someone else's emotions, and we applied those thinking habits and patterns and beliefs inside of her relationship. So she was able to stay with the same person in the same relationship and just change her thoughts to love her relationship even more. Another example of someone else who was so unhappy because of her relationship was because she was not in a relationship. So what she decided to do was not to change her thoughts about not being in a relationship. She just decided to change the situation and get in a relationship. So she made a plan about how she would get herself into a relationship. And she took steps towards that plan. And she found someone to be in a relationship with, and she loves her life so much more now. (laughs) So in her case, she didn't have to change her thought about what it meant to not be in a relationship. She just changed her situation to be in a relationship. Another example is me. (laughs) This one I won't be confidential about. I'll actually tell you. So a couple of episodes ago, I think it was in the episode about plenty of time, plenty of money, and plenty of energy, I described to you how I was someone who felt lack. And I was actually kind of struggling with some scarcity thoughts instead of feeling abundant. And so what I did, I did not change my situation. I changed my thoughts about what I had. I changed my thoughts about how my life was going. I changed the evidence that I was looking for and finding. I wasn't changing anything outside of myself. I was just changing what was in my own head. I trained my brain intentionally to find proof that my life was abundant. And guess what? My thoughts changed and I felt so abundant and I loved my life even more. And the final example that I have for you is someone who was unhappy at work. Remember my suggestions, either change the situation or change your thoughts about the situation or both. And this person did the third option. She did both. She was so unhappy at work. And her unhappiness at work was really affecting many other areas of her life. It was affecting her weight. It was affecting her relationship. It was affecting her personal free time. It was affecting so many different areas of her life. And so what she decided to do was change the situation. She changed jobs, but she also decided to change her thoughts about herself as an employee. She changed her thoughts about her previous job that she was so unhappy with because she didn't want to carry all that baggage along with her into the future. And she also changed her thoughts about the new job that she started as kind of an escape to get away from the old job. Again, she wanted to be intentional about how she thought about being an employee and working for an employer. And so not only did she change her job, she also changed her thoughts and she is loving her life so much better now. So I want you to think about your life. Do you love it? If so, that is great. And my question for you is, do you want to love it even more? (laughs) Maybe you do. If so, all of these strategies could work for you. But if you answered no when I asked, do you love your life, then do you want to change your thoughts or do you want to change the situation that you are currently in or do you want to do both? All of those 
are available to you. And of course, you know I love to check to find out if there's any resistance. So when I just told you that last statement that all of those are available to you, did any resistance come up for you? Did you think, ah, well, not really. Well, maybe, I mean, it sounds good for someone else, but it wouldn't really apply to me. Good to know. I want to hear it. I want you to hear your own resistance. I want you to notice what your brain is telling you, why a change, why an improvement, why loving your life wouldn't be possible for you. I want you to hear it, see it, and think about it so that then you can decide what you want to do with those resistant thoughts. Okay, I've just given you four suggestions about how you can love your life. And now I am so curious, what are you willing to try? What did I remind you of that maybe you had forgotten about? What is an idea that I suggested that you're just going to pass on? And why? Why are you passing on it? I want to (laughs) know. Please send me an email at hi at bexby.org or leave a comment in the show notes for this episode at bexby.org slash love your life. And if you want help with any of this, with making a plan to change something about your life, for example, your job, your business, your weight, your home, or if you want help choosing intentional thoughts and practicing them, I've got you. This is my specialty. This is my work. This is what I do. So reach out to me. My website is bexby.org and then just go to work with me and you can schedule some time with me and we can figure this out. We can figure out how you can make a change to your situation, how you can make a change to your thoughts or how you can do both. And if you are one of my favorites, I sent you a one-page summary of this episode because this was a lot in one short period of time here. So what you can do when you see this one-page summary, you can review the four suggestions, you can contemplate them for yourself, and then you can decide how you would like to proceed. My wish for you, my hope for you, what I really, really want for you is for you to love your life. I know it's possible. I know you can do it. And I am so excited to see what you do. That's it for today. Thank you so much for listening. I can't wait to talk to you next week. This has been Release Your Resistance. Thank you for listening. If you like this podcast, make sure you're subscribed and leave a review on Apple Podcasts. Also, think about someone who you know who would love this episode and share it with them. There should be a share button on your app if you're listening to this on your phone. If you'd like to continue this conversation one-on-one or in real time, come visit me on my site at bexbead.org to see how we can work together. 